Hello everyone, welcome back to Altengrad City in City Skylines. We crossed the river in the last episode and did some low density expansion. Today we will continue building from there, finish some more low density blocks, but most importantly we will build a big exhibition center. Let's go. So I'm going to start right away by placing some key buildings that are going to form the exhibition center or the exhibition grounds. And then I'm kind of going to talk about how I chose these buildings and you know why I, uh, I did it in this particular style. So in this particular case, I'm forming some sort of a sculpture really uh, in the center of the entire place. Uh, it's formed by those two arches. I think these are actually vanilla monuments. I'm not exactly sure. And uh, then I'm going to use a couple of buildings that are just going to be you know, forming the, the main landmarks of the area, let's say. So at first I chose this building. It's kind of unfortunate that I chose it because it's a train station that I really, really like. And I really wanted to use it for another train station in the city. But right now I can't really do that because I chose it for this place. And I kind of like it more for this place. So for some future train station, I will have to choose something else. I converted it into procedural objects because I needed to get rid of those uh, platform roofs, the platform covers, and even the platforms themselves, because obviously they have no place in here. The building really does look like an exhibition center, something that I kind of wanted to place at the front. So that's absolutely perfect. Then I'm using another train station building, which is this one. And it's an elevated station, some German station, I think. I'm not exactly sure about it. But again, I converted it into PO because I just really liked the uh, the, the fronts of, of this building, or at least the front on one side. But uh, I just, uh, you know, copy pasted it and turned it around so that it looks uh, symmetrical. And uh, then I just used uh, another two instances, placed it uh, side by side and uh, did some kind of a like an exhibition halls or something, something like that. So that's pretty much the rough shape finished. I intentionally just uh, experimented with everything and then I demolished it and built it again so that it's going to be in this uh, nice shot for the time lapse, kind of, you know, together. And uh, the last building that I used is that, uh, I think it's called Market Hall, the building that's uh, right now not really positioned yet, but I'm going to use that as some sort of a bigger uh, exhibition hall uh, at the at the back of this entire grounds area. Also, everything should be kind of uh, symmetrical or just nicely geometric geomet geometrically oriented. It's probably not the word, isn't it? But you probably know what I mean. So that there's just some nice geometry going on. The, the buildings are kind of following it, right? So that's why I'm using uh, all these rulers in here and uh, making sure that they are going into the centers of these buildings and so on using uh, three instances of the Market Hall building just to create some interesting shape. So now let's talk about why I chose this particular style and what was actually the original plan. So I was really looking at Google Maps and all kinds of pictures for the, for the Brno exhibition center or exhibition grounds because it looks, it looks just incredible and I really wanted to build some sort of a early 20th century or 20s, 30s uh, exhibition center. Kind of a grand looking, kind of functionalistic building, something like that. But unfortunately, I'm again limited by what I can have in the workshop. I suppose I could have made like a completely custom asset, but uh, that would make this entire project uh, a bit too large, a bit too lengthy. So eventually I just started uh, browsing all these unique buildings and eventually even train stations or, I don't know, schools and hospitals even. And uh, just I really wanted to just find like a one grand looking fancy building that's just going to be uh, forming the entrance. And I eventually found the train station or decided to use the train station because it looked exactly like that. But unfortunately, it's not the early 20th century style. It's kind of like a late 19th century or maybe middle of 19th century, something like that. So it's not exactly the time period that I wanted, that I was aiming for in this place. But uh, eventually it does make sense uh, to have an exhibition center from that time period in this part of the city because it's kind of the edge of the late or middle 19th century expansion of the city. So, you know, there was just an open space and they decided to build the exhibition grounds right there. 
and also the rest of the buildings, the market hall and the second train station and even the sculpture in the center, the arch, is, uh, is kind of following that particular style. So, you know, nothing, nothing all that uh, bad eventually happened there. Now, this exhibition center is located directly between the low density area that we did last time and also this uh, confluence of the rivers. I think it was episode uh, 25 and uh, we did some like plaza on the confluence and then just did some buildings kind of aiming further away from it. And I never really finished that because I was just waiting for some, I don't know, ideas what to do next in there. And now it's uh, much clearer. So what I'm doing in here is just uh, expanding some of the waterfront, extending the waterfront really uh, all the way towards that uh, exhibition grounds area. And finally, it's nicely going to be tied together. We are even going to finish these tram tracks that are just going to the old bridge. And uh, we will be able to just uh, put more tram lines through the area. In the last episode, you could have seen that we had uh, two tram lines going into that uh, loop next to that outskirts train station. But I finally did uh, one of those lines. I made it go this way. It's not exactly going to be the final position because again, I'm just I'm just uh, reorganizing the tram lines so that it's going to look good in cinematics. So that uh, you know, after we finish some tram infrastructure, we will see some vehicles actually using it because you know that makes sense. It's just looking much better. But uh, eventually, it's probably going to be completely reorganized when I'm going to finish uh, the city in this time period. I'm uh, probably going to finalize the lines and uh, just, like I said, completely reorganize it. I would really like to do it so that uh, maybe there are two tram lines for each uh, each terminus loop. If that's kind of going to make sense. And that's even what they are designed for, really, for the two lines. That's what I'm always talking about when I'm creating these, these loops, that they can take two lines simultaneously without any issues. So what I did here was uh, was kind of important, obviously, because uh, I had to somehow finish this this waterfront, this uh, this key. I don't really like it when when people and when even I do it uh, when I do some of those very long uh, keys uh, on the edges of rivers or seas or something because it's just looking kind of unnatural. Obviously, it is, but uh, you kind of want to at least have some different elements to the wall or somehow just you know liven it up or something so in here since we are pretty much aiming towards the low density area there is no reason really to continue that key forward so i just decided to turn it slightly you know inland and uh, do some stairs as an entrance to to the key and that was pretty much it in here i just uh, used some procedural objects pavement and this retaining wall and finishing the the end of this bridge that's leading to the monastery island. Uh, I was using that uh, very customized road for the bridge and it had that uh, strange looking transition on the intersection so I just had to use some prop curbs and cover that with some pavement and eventually it's it's looking very very nice obviously with the help of the node controller I also made that intersection much fancier. Also, the tram stop that is going to be right in front of the exhibition ground is not exactly on the street. It's uh, slightly offset from the street. So that was just a nice opportunity to create something more interesting for the intersection. So that there is uh, basically a five-way intersection now with one way being just the tracks, right? So they are going offset from the road. I suppose it's going to increase capacity when there is some like very large event going on on the exhibition grounds if this was real life of course then uh, you know the trams might be like parked there waiting for some people and uh, not obstructing the traffic and obviously the station itself all the other platforms themselves for the stop can take much more people so in here i'm doing some kind of infrastructure if you remember from the last episode i did this uh, this uh, train bridge uh, well not this particular bridge but these tracks that are going uh, towards the river and I made a crossing there but I eventually decided that uh, there's going to be this uh, tiny little underpass because this is fairly important road which is right now kind of an entrance to the city or main road going into the city I think I was doing uh, some of this on the live stream and I was talking about the selection of roads that I have in the game and uh, I was really not sure how I'm supposed to do these kinds of entrances to the city because 
these days if you are building a city like if you if you fire up a new save game in vanilla city skylines you obviously have the highway connection but that's also how you have it in real life you know you have just highways connecting major cities and uh, that's pretty much it you usually have some either like a ring connection around the city with the highways with some entrances forming or you know using some highway exits and stuff but that's obviously not how it was you know back in the day you had some roads going away from these cities but uh, how did they exactly look like um, i'm not exactly sure honestly so i'm just using some roads that i either you know think that they might be looking uh, similar to something that might existed in real life or you know based on some black and white really old pictures or something like that but eventually it's kind of going to be up to me how i'm going to do this and up to the assets that i have in the game so i think i have like two or three roads that i can use for the outside connections right now but obviously as we progress in time i'm going to upgrade them either to complete highways or some just larger roads right now these kinds of uh, connections outside of the city are usually uh, usually connecting some smaller towns smaller villages just outside the city so i think that uh, in some future episodes i would really like to just concentrate on finishing the 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 outlying parts of the map you know doing these kinds of country roads leaving the city maybe even making some intersections with a couple of buildings you know like intersection inns and something like that and obviously the farms right so i'm actually kind of preparing for that in this episode i'm building you know that uh, road that leads this like leaves the city and i was constantly just uh, i don't know looking at the entire picture of the city and just uh, trying to see if this is actually going to be a good idea for like the edge of the city at least in this time period anyway i did uh, that uh, second or not second but well actually yeah second bridge over that uh, that part of the river in there but this time it's it's a it's a road bridge at first i did it with uh, tram tracks but i was kind of getting ahead of myself because i want to have those uh, tram tracks on that new bridge uh, a bit later in some later periods in time but right now i just want to have it as a road bridge and it's it's basically a bridge that's connecting the uh, the input road into the city to that uh, to that riverbank that has the parliament building on it right so it's not exactly a, a bridge in the center of the city by any means but uh, it's just a very important connection and there were no road bridges there apart from the very old bridge or the old stone bridge there so i really wanted to have something slightly more modern and this time i wasn't really uh taking that much time to do it because i just used the the railway bridge the actual railway bridge i'm not exactly sure which one this is but i just treated it with the node controller made it slightly wider so that the pillars are exactly going to fit that particular that particular road so that the pillars are going to go on the edge between the road and the sidewalk and uh, i eventually used the vanilla uh, industrial road because it kind of has like a concrete ish texture concrete panel texture so you know that kind of makes sense for this type of uh, road bridge structure and again i'm kind of limited by by the number of bridges here because i obviously used a couple of them in the city before so i want to have more variety i don't want to just copy paste some of these structures so some of these important you know landmarks so it definitely made sense to try something new i think that uh, it's pretty much it when it comes to bridges over the river at least in this time period i don't really have any plans to expand the city you know beyond this bridge really or like at least not that much maybe some low density stuff but uh, this is pretty much going to be it maybe on the side of the city of the harbor there might be some kind of a bridge uh, over the water but uh, definitely not in this time period so in this time period i think we are done with this kind of infrastructure there are not that many connections over the river if you think about it but uh, I suppose it's fine because the rivers are kind of wide so it makes sense that you know the bridges are just not that uh, numerous and uh, and like I said uh, there are going to be some more connections uh, in later in later decades right anyway let's now go back and uh, talk more about the actual exhibition grounds so I really wanted to do some kind of a fancy plaza in front of it we are on the edge of the city pretty much so we have lots of you know open areas here that we can use for all kinds of decorations 
So uh, some kind of a plaza in front of the main entrance building. It's obviously going to be tied heavily to that tram stop, but uh, it also needs to be just good looking on its own. So I was just playing around with some elements like the fountains, I eventually put one fountain underneath that sculpture inside the grounds and a couple of fountains here uh, and in the front at the entrance. And I'm just using these rulers to, again, have the place uh, nicely symmetrical and just not really eyeball it all the time. So I'm just going to build this uh, like a corridor using these uh, planters. There's later going to be all kinds of benches in there and it's just going to look like a proper, like a, like a portal if you are arriving from the city, maybe by car or on foot, if you are walking from that uh, bridge to the monastery island. You are just going to be greeted by this uh, very open area in front of the entrance, which is uh, kind of going to be directing you towards the entrance even. So, you know, that was kind of what I was aiming for. At the same time, I don't really want to have this place completely paved because that's just not going to look good. I think I was talking about this on the stream that uh, it's a bit of a shame that we cannot have more control over the surfaces in the game especially when we use decals, you know, if you use decal cobblestone, for example, then that's kind of it. You cannot use any additional decals on top of it, like some stains or, I don't know, puddles or something. That would kind of, you know, liven it up, make it a bit more believable. At least you can't use that uh, with videos, because obviously you're going to have that flickering of decals. I suppose you could somehow manage to do that with just screenshots, but in here we have only one layer of decals to work with. So I decided to use this uh, network uh, tiles, network stone, something, uh, something decorative network. And I'm just going to do it as an outline of a different surface. So at the front, uh, at the front of those planters, I decided to have it like a, like a circular shape, which is going to end by the tracks. And uh, there's, there's going to be this network only when the, where the tramps are going to unload people and uh, it's just going to end by another like a circular pattern close to the building. And this is just going to be the edge of a different surface. So I decided to use this cobblestone. I haven't done some of these surfaces in a really, really long time, if you think about it. So it was kind of refreshing to just go back to this kind of detailing because I really, really like doing these kinds of surfaces, especially nowadays when we have that uh, procedural objects functionality where if you're going to convert these decals into procedural objects, they are immediately immediately going to stuck to the surface where you originally placed them on. So as you can see, they are nicely uh, underneath that uh, decorative network already. This is like a connecting path that just uh, goes uh, from the side of the entrance. And in here, I decided to put this very short edge of that cobblestone area. And as you can see, I can just use the node controller to nicely uh, shape that uh, that edge to the path that we already have here. So this is this is absolutely amazing. And obviously this kind of detailing is just enabled by the node controller. And uh, if I didn't have that, I would have to do it completely differently. Maybe just leave it with only the pavement or something like that. So as you can see, the node controller, you know, is even handy when you are doing this kind of detailing. It's not exactly the most obvious uh, functionality of the mod because you know people would just assume that it's for intersections mostly but you can just do all these kinds of tweaks even for the decorations and that's just absolutely amazing. Uh, doing also the custom uh, tram wires on this uh, offset uh, track I could just keep it with the vanilla tracks on it really but uh, I decided not to because we have to connect it to this custom intersection anyway and it doesn't always look that good when you just have the custom wires on the intersection and then every single connection uh, away from it has those vanilla wires. So that was the reasoning in the previous episode when I did that entire network on that side completely customized and that's exactly the same reasoning over here. So over the bridge I think that we are continuing with just the vanilla wires because that was already done but uh, inside this little tip between the rivers, I am doing these custom wires. Not completely all the way, but uh, I think that maybe I am going to revisit that place sometime in the future, probably before we are going to do some of the some of the tram rides in the city. I'm probably going to have to revisit some of those uh, some of those uh, lines and just do some more detailing along them. 
This was a very important detailing part because I was really looking a lot into these kinds of views from the citizens views, you know, what people might see when they are going to cross that bridge from the island and uh, what are they going to see in front of them because doing this kind of detailing from the top view is obviously not going to give you the whole picture. Intentionally I wanted to only use something very short in these planters and at the same time I didn't really want to do the flowers because I'm kind of doing them everywhere and uh, it feels a bit cheap detailing sometimes in some areas of the city but uh, in this particular place I decided to do those very short trees. They look absolutely perfect for this place and uh, then I just continued with the flowers uh, are around that, uh, that tram station They're doing this green strip that is dividing the tram, stem, the tram stop from, from, the, from the road. Also very important detailing pieces were some of those uh, columns for the commercial posters and obviously uh, benches and street lights. So street lights are super important or lamps are very important in this area because they're just going to add uh, something into this place. They're kind of going to break the surfaces even though it's just a tiny detail but uh, just a very important one. And also I really needed to make this place functional. So that's why I'm putting these pedestrian paths in here. And as you can see I'm doing quite a lot of them. This is because I just want to allow people to just choose between different uh, different ways to cross this open area because it's just going to be more natural. If I put only one path, forced people to just uh, walk only on one path, it would look kind of bad. So I'm even doing multiple connections to the tram stop. Later I'm actually going to put more connections even on the other side of the tram stop and all kinds of different uh, places, different entrances into the into the grounds and so on. And obviously why, when that is done I have to just convert it into the invisible pedestrian paths and uh, that's it. I suppose that I could have and probably should have done this with the surface variants right from the start because now I have a slightly tiny bit of an issue of people just uh, flying in the air above the surface but at the same time I cannot move even the invisible path lower because it's just going to move the terrain lower and kind of going to destroy some of the detailing with the procedural object decals but that's just unfortunate I haven't really fixed it I thought it was kind of a small issue but again when I'm going to do the tram rides I suppose I will have to fix that because from that perspective it's going to be much more noticeable. So now for the inside of the exhibition uh, area exhibition center so I was not really sure how to do this because at first I wanted to just uh, use surface painter, put pavement everywhere and be done with it. But that's just not going to look very good. Like I said before, it would make the surface very monotonous because I can't really have that much control over how the surface looks like. I could place a couple of stains here and there, but that wouldn't look very right. You know, I don't really want to have uh, the surfaces inside ugly, you know, intentionally ugly, or dirty. So. I've finally decided to use this uh, decorative road. So I used it a couple of times in the city center before. It's a very nice looking road. It's completely leveled. It doesn't have the curbs on the sides of the, of the car area in the center. And it has that nice little cobblestone pattern on it. So it's just looking very, very nice. And again, using the node controller on some of the entrances in here to really match it, match the width of the road to the pattern on the building and obviously I'm also using pedestrian connections through the entrance building so that people can enter the inside of this place. I don't think I've done that yet but I downloaded, I mean I already downloaded uh, the uh, uh, the cube uh, service buildings uh, for not just service buildings but also like commercial and office buildings but I haven't put them into this area yet. I kind of need to remember to do that because that's just going to increase the pedestrian traffic into this area which is obviously uh, what I'm kind of aiming for. I want to have a lot of people walking around but surprisingly enough people are already walking around this place which is kind of bizarre because they are uh, they really have no I don't know uh, no destination in this area but they're just walking around to reach some of those low density areas uh, through the plaza in front of the exhibition center. So that's that's nice to see. It definitely going to it's definitely going to improve the cinematics quite a lot and uh, later like I said I'm going to put those uh, cube uh, commercial buildings most probably maybe even residential offices 
inside of these grounds because uh, I don't really want to have like unique buildings in here because that's just going to attract tourists and stuff and uh, I really don't like tourists in this game. They're kind of ruining the, the shots because they don't have the 1950s uh, textures or skins. So I definitely want to just have the citizens walking around this area. And yeah, sure, citizens can also go to these unique uh, buildings or unique, uh, you know, fake unique buildings even. But it's going to be much better if I just uh, make it actually functional for the citizens. And as you can tell by the by the demand bar, I am definitely in need of more commercial buildings, which is uh, really difficult to to satisfy because a lot of those uh, a lot of those row houses or even the low density buildings I'm obviously placing a lot of uh, residential I don't really have that many different commercial buildings so I will probably have to start treating that using those uh, using those uh, cube service buildings all right anyway that is going to be all almost for the exhibition area I did a lot of these places around and uh, a lot of infrastructure, but we are going to all see that in the next episode. And actually, uh, when I was editing for this episode, I noticed that it was already getting a bit too long. So eventually, if you remember, in the last episode, I was talking about that little strip of land uh, right on the side of the river that I want to finish in today's episode. And I actually did, but I decided to keep that uh, for the next time lapse. I'm going to show you that in the next episode. So even though I already built it and it's going to be maybe partially visible in the cinematics, I will properly focus on it in the next episode. Do not really make this one lar uh, longer than it needs to be. All right. So this one is just going to focus on the exhibition center, which is already finished, as you can see. And uh, we can just observe how, how the finished uh, thing looks like. So you can you can definitely see all those people how they are just walking around that plaza. It's it's very satisfying to look how uh, to see how it looks like when when people are just using these all the paths that I made for them and even the trams how they are nicely going to the intersection. You know it's just very satisfying to to see that. I also put these like shelters on the tram stop because there might be quite a lot of people just uh, using the trams uh, you know if this was real life then there would probably be quite a lot of people going into the exhibition center if there is some kind of you know larger event so you know all all citizens from all around the city and even outside of the city can easily reach this place so what are the plans for the next episode next time we will expand further towards that second river around that new bridge that we built i'm going to build uh, lots of different areas different blocks i have one special project in mind and i also uh, i will also you know do or uh, finish that uh, that little strip of land that i talked about that i already built for today but i'm going to show you that in the next episode okay that is going to be all for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you, channel members, for directly supporting what I do here. If you liked today's video, you can help it by clicking the thumbs up button, writing some comment and sharing it. Also, if you would like to become a direct supporter, you can become a channel member too. I will see you next time. Take care and goodbye.